Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight was the Thanksgiving episode of Impact, and uh, yeah, that was pretty much the entire show. Um, we had one match, but it was uh, pretty entertaining throughout the night. So we opened the show up with uh, Jeremy Borash and Josh Matthews at the commentator's table uh, talking about the Turkey Bowl match that's going to happen later on tonight. There's going to be a 10-man tag with uh, whoever takes the pinfall in the match is the one that must wear the turkey suit. Uh, so at right, right after that, we go and take a look back at 2008 in the Turkey Bowl match where Alex Shelley faced... Um, who did he face? Davari. Well, Sean Davari in WWE and... I can't remember who else was in that match. Oh, and Rhino, duh, because uh, Rhino ended up winning that match. Uh, he hit Shelly with a gore, and Shelly was forced to wear the suit, but originally he didn't want to wear it, so Mick Foley came out and told him that uh, if you don't wear the suit, you'll be fired, plain and simple. So we go back to um, the pavilion, which we're still at, and, uh, well, throughout the night, all the wrestlers talk about, you know, what Thanksgiving means to them and what they're thankful for and memories from Thanksgivings. So that kind of has a theme throughout the night between segments. Um, but we go backstage and Jeremy Borash is there with uh, the Thanksgiving feast on the table and he's got a tumbler, which he's going to use to draw the names for the 10-man uh, tag later on. Well, 10-person tag later on. So we go to commercial, we come back, and uh, Eli Drake and Chris Adonis walk up, and uh, Eli tells a Thanksgiving story about, I guess, when his buddy stayed at his house, and they were talking about mashed potatoes, and he's like, the Drakes do two great things, and one is make mashed potatoes, and two is kick and keister. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this was the theme for... Most of the show was Eli and Adonis back with Jeremy Borash, uh, constantly picking numbers out of the tumbler, and it was really good because Eli's always a good character to have, and between him picking on Borash and just what him and Adonis were saying throughout the night was entertaining. But uh, so anyway, he turns the turkey, changing the name of the turkey bowl into the Eli Drake Gravy Train Turkey Trot. So uh, they pick the first name, and this will be the captain of the first team, and it is Eddie Edwards. So after they pick the person out of the tumbler, Mackenzie interviews them. So McKenzie, McKenzie interviews Edwards, and uh, he runs down a list of accomplishments, and he's like, now I can say that I've participated in the uh, Eli Drake turkey trot. Uh, which was another thing throughout the night that nobody could uh, correctly say it, which I didn't the first time. Um, but yeah, he says that he's not going to be wearing the turkey suit tonight. So we go back into the room, and JB pulls another one out, and this time it's Phantasma. And he he's interviewed, and he says, you know, the turkey trot sounds like a party. And uh, we, every, every party needs chocolate. So then we get a preview of the start of a knockouts tournament to crown the new knockout champion which will start next week and the uh, competitors in that are laurel van ness madison rain the returning madison rain don't know how long for uh casey spinelli sienna alley and rosemary now i would assume that taya was going to be one of the members of this but with everything going on and her not being able to make the trip for Bound for Glory. Um, I'm guessing that's the reason they uh, picked up Rain or maybe Spinelli. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that begins next week, like I said. And then uh, we get another preview for all the events happening next week. Uh, along with the Knockouts tournament, we get uh, James Storm versus Tejano, uh, Matt Seidel versus Tyson Dukes, uh, Ishimore versus Hakeem Zane, who I believe was the winner of the impact um yeah where they're crowning the new person um and then we got a 
Alberto El Patron versus Johnny Impact, and we will hear from LAX. So it looks like next week's episode will be uh, pretty action-packed, considering we only had one match uh, this evening, and everything else was pretty much shot backstage. So then we go and take a look at the 2011 Turkey Bowl with uh, Eric Young facing Robbie E. Uh, Eric Young wins the match with a jumping pile driver, which leads to Robbie E. laying on the ground. Uh, So Eric Young says, you know, I got bad news and good news, and that's uh, he's not going to be able to wear the suit, but I'm going to be able to find a replacement. And uh, Robbie T was with him at the time, and he was in the ring, and Eric Young points to him, and the referee says, the Stinger made, uh, appointed me, and you're going to have to wear it now. If not, Robbie E. will be stripped of the, I think, television title is what they were talking about. But uh, So yeah, he ends up putting the suit on, and then Eric Young mocks him and things like that. So we go back stage with JB and Drake and Adonis, and it's pick number three, and it is Allie. So Mackenzie interviews her, and in the beginning, she's like, I, I want to wear a turkey suit. I have all types of pictures of turkeys. You want to see on my phone? And then Mackenzie was like, no, 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 you don't want to wear the suit. And she's like, oh, of course. Uh, next week, I'd look like a f- fool in the knockouts tournament if I wore the suit. So then we go to pick four, and it's Caleb Conley. So <laughs> Mackenzie interviews him. And Trevor Lee walks in with him. He's like, oh, of course it was it was Caleb Conley. Y- y- you better not lose, because if you lose and walk around in the turkey suit, you're going to make me look like an idiot, too. And then uh, pick number five is Richard Justice, and he gets interviewed, and he's just happy to be in the match, which it's been a while since we've seen him. And then pick number six is KM, which originally I figured, oh, KM's in the match? He's the perfect guy to put the turkey suit on. Um, but he says he doesn't care about the, the match. All he cares about is proving himself to American top team. So I guess they're going to keep running with that angle, which I like. I think that's going to be pretty good. Then we get pick number seven, which is Laurel Van Ness. And, uh, Mackenzie interviews her and she just says that she loves a good turkey dinner and then runs around and making all types of noises. So let me take a look back at last year's Turkey Bowl between uh, Robbie E. and Grado, and Robbie E. wins uh, the match, and Grado is forced to put on the suit, and then, of course, in Grado-like fashion, he starts to embrace it and starts dancing around the ring, so that was funny. And then, that brings us... Oh, no, I'm sorry. We still have the rest of the picks. So, pick number eight was Fala Ba. He gets interviewed and just basically says, Ba, Ba, and then uh, says, Gobble, Gobble. And then Garza Jr. is pick number nine. And then pick number 10, which is team captain for team number two, is Chris Adonis. So he was in the room, obviously, when they were picking out the names. And uh, him, he was kind of uh, beside himself. And Eli Drake was the one that actually picked the name out. So it was funny there. But like I said, the uh, the... The back and forth between Adonis and Drake and JB it was all funny. It was good stuff, and I like that they at least put the spotlight on their champion. Makes sense to me. So uh, this was about 9.30, and uh, everyone comes out for, I guess, Thanksgiving dinner. And so Eli cuts a promo before uh, the match happens, and he, he says they all have to upload the on, uphold the honor system and uh, wear the suit if they lose. So he basically has... J- he gives JB a sheet, and he has to read them basically their rights, and they have to recite that they solemnly swear to wear the suit if they lose. So that brings us to the 10-man tag, which is Chris Adonis, Laurel Van Ness, Caleb Conley, Phantasma, and KM versus Eddie Edwards, Ali, Falaba, Garza Jr., and Richard Justice. So it didn't really seem like there was a theme with the way they were picking. I figured they were just going to pick names and put them heels versus faces. Makes makes sense considering, yeah. Um, so this was an entertaining match. Uh, during the as soon as the match started, Eli Drake went outside and sat down at one of the tables and started eating. Um, but the heels controlled the majority of the match until Eddie Edwards got the hot tag, and then all hell broke loose. Um, action spilled to the outside. Uh, Richard Justice went on the top rope and jumped on top of everybody. 
Uh, everybody held him up, and then Allie goes on top, and she jumps on top of Justice. They all fall down. Edwards and Adonis end back end up back in the ring, and Adonis is going to put Edwards into the Adonis lock. Edwards slips out, rolls him up for the three count. So after the match, Eli comes into the ring and, you know, he's like, oh, no, no, you don't have to wear it, so on and so forth. JB says, no, no, you have to wear it. Um, And eventually Adonis starts to put, like, a leg in, and then he throws it on the ground, runs out of the ring, starts to go to the back. Security comes out. They kind of coerce him to go toward the ring. So he goes, all right, all right, I'll go. Then runs around him, goes to the back, and there's more security guards there. So they're going back and forth, and then JB is like, all right, well, I just got word from the back that if Chris Adonis doesn't put on the suit, that Eli Drake is going to have to. So Eli was like, not going to happen. He goes outside the ring with Adonis to kind of, you know, get him to go in the ring. So Eli walks behind them. Adonis eventually goes in the ring, puts on the suit, walks out, the ring does his little trot around, gets into Allie's face and starts yelling at her. Eddie Edwards throws a piece of food at him, and then a food fight erupts, and that was the end of the show. Nice little entertaining show. Um, nothing too crazy. They kind of made mention at the beginning of the show that this week they're basically going to put everything on hold in order to, you know, and then pick everything up next week, which is good, so... Like I said, the holiday-themed episodes are always fun. I mean, SmackDown used to do the Thanksgiving episode all the time when it was on Thursday, but this is definitely a good placeholder. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, if you like what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.